From the Schottenstein Center, one team playing for a state championship from our local girls' squads, the Versailles Lady Tigers, back at state for the third time in four years. What a great opening national anthem by Miller City's Amanda Simon. And the Tiger fans and Coach Stonebreaker are loving the welcome to the jungle right before the tip. For sale, starts out well. Skip pass to Camille Watrin, knocks down the three. It's tied at three early on. And an offensive rebound kick out to Watrin. She buries another triple, 6-5 for sales. Down three in the first, Claire Schmidtmeyer. Nice post move, cuts the lead to one. We're tied at 12 after a quarter to the second. Great look to Elizabeth Orton. She ties it again. And then the Tigers go back to Ording and the foul, 17-14 Versailles in front. Watchering continues to hit the outside shot, wide open for the corner three, it's 21-18 Versailles. Then Danielle Winner, offensive rebound, 23-21 nearing halftime. And just before the break, Cammie McEldowney joins the three-point party, 26-23 Tigers at halftime. Third quarter. Gilmore on a 9-2 run. Danielle Winter knocks down the jumper, cutting the lead to two. Then McEldowney gives Versailles the lead. Another three, 33-32 Tigers. Down four, they go to the freshman, Lindsay Winter. She cuts it to two once again. And then before the end of the third, Danielle Winter, the older sister, ties it from 12. She has a game high, team high 13. We're tied at 37. Fourth quarter, though, Gilmore going on a run. Ellen Peters cuts the lead to two with the jumper, but Naz Hillman extends the lead. She had 24 to lead all scores. Tigers down 10 late. Never giving up. She knocks down the triple, 11 points. Gilmore up seven. Four seconds left. Lindsay Winter, offensive rebound, makes it 56-52. Gilmore. Then Versailles defense forces a five-second violation, so they get it with four seconds. Inbounds to McEldowney, cuts the lead to two, three seconds on the clock. Tigers set up the full court pressure, baseball pass intercepted by Versailles, but they turn it over trying to get it up the floor. Coach Stonebreaker said they just needed a couple more seconds to complete the comeback. A great season comes to a close for Versailles. Their state runners up falling 56-54. Our girls were ready today. They really were. Um, only having 12 hours prepare is, is, is tough for us because we, we really like to break down a lot of things, but uh, they took it today in practice and they practiced hard again today, one last day right before a game. And uh, we came out, missed a couple bunnies, I know, early on. But uh, I really felt throughout the entire game, we won the battle of the hustle plays and we played with everything we had out there. If things would have went our way a couple different times on, on the glass. I, th I think we, we, we could have pulled out a win, but I feel as if uh, these girls did a nice job staying together. Coming back, uh, I know they, everybody thought it was done with about a minute to go, and these girls never, they never fought, or they never, uh, they never said die, and they kept fighting back. Basically, the hustle plays you're talking about or something else on the floor? I, yeah, and, uh, you know, I, I I really didn't think we uh, out-rebounded them because I felt like they got a lot of rebounds tonight. But, um, you know, it just shows that the hustle that these girls put forth, and we're not going to have a rebounder that, that has 10 or 12 rebounds a game. That's just not us. We, uh, we gang rebound. We gang box out. And... Uh, uh, they share the rebounds, and you can look down through our section. I see six, eight, four, five um, rebounds per person. So uh, I really felt like if if we just took care of the ball a couple possessions and, and valued the ball, it would have been a different story, different outcome. How much did their defense have to do with you being able to take care of the ball and value the ball? Because I thought they defended it. They defended us very well. Uh, their guards really frustrated our guards out front. They did a nice job trapping um, in the second half especially. I thought we got a little loose in the first half. Uh, we were able to find some some open seams, but in the second half they, they picked up their pressure. Um, they sat there big inside, so we couldn't get anything easy inside. And uh, they, they defended our, our three ball very well in the second half. Speaking of defending three ball, you did that pretty well. He's better than absolutely. <laughs> 
Subject to the issue. Were you pleased with that, or is it kind of a either or? It left uh, Hillman more open. It left Hillman more open, but we were wanting. I mean, we wanted to make sure that they they didn't get the three off, and that was the main focus. Um, I, I I thought we could have. Uh, Maybe not allowed her to get so many good seals on us, but you got to give up something against a good team like that. Was I think a nine to three run there that they had at the beginning of the fourth quarter where they pulled ahead? Mm -hmm. What happened during that stretch? Again, we we missed assignments. Um, I, I think two girls ran into each other um, and left uh, number four outside in the corner for a three at one point. Our two girls ran into each other. And then uh, we just we didn't run a, a, a great offense for us at that time. You know, we were trying to run a couple sets to slow us down and, and to really get a good shot at the basket. And you know, just a couple possessions back and forth there didn't allow us to do so. What do you make of that comeback with three to go? You know, down. And what was it like to see them chip their way and at least really come back from a really a last chance of a shot? Ago. Right. Um, you know, those are the things we practice uh, at least once a week, twice a week, our, our end of situation games. So it's nice to see something like that uh, transfer onto the court and, and show them how useful those, those end of game situations are. And now I can take that into the next upcoming years and say, look, we lost by two. We had this chance. Let's make sure that we learn from it. Camille, you, I think you were three of five from downtown in the first half. And your, your passing game was getting you open, and usually that's uh, Gilmore's game. What allowed you to turn the table in that regard and find the open threes in the first half? Um, yeah, I think yesterday when I hit my first three threes, it just gives me confidence going into this game. Um, I knew I could do it, and I knew I had experience on this court, so it wasn't. I was not. I wasn't used to it, but I've been here before, so I think that experience helped me to stay. Um, not as nervous, I guess, and just be a little more comfortable from the perimeter. Coach, did that Naz Hillman for them present any unique defensive uh, challenge for you guys they hadn't seen yet this year? Well, usually, you know, when we play teams um, that have a big girl like that, we can sag down under and help out with our guards. Um, and we knew that with their firepower on the outside that we weren't going to be able to do that. And, uh, yes, that – created a lot of challenges for us. Um, could we mix up our defenses a little bit? Maybe. But we were, I felt like doing what we needed to do against the guards, we just needed to contain Naz a little bit more inside and box her out. We didn't get enough box outs on her. Daniel, you went head to head with her. Could you talk about the bell and um, what makes Naz home and the problem she was today? She's a great player. She works her way around people, and if you try to play her straight up, she'll find a way to get through you. She can jump high. Credit to her. She's an amazing post player. Best one I've probably played against in a long time. Great sealer. Anytime you try to over defend her one way, she seals you and, and really does a nice job with her back to the basket. Again, probably the best post player we've played against this year. Daniel, what do you mean? Um, it shows how much heart we had. We wanted that state championship so bad, and to know that we could all get on the same page with each other and work hard, it just shows how great of a team we really are and how close we are. Coach, how did you defend that last position, force that turnover? And I know, obviously, you turned it over as time expired, but what was the approach there? The approach was just to try to get a five-second call once again so we could set up an out-of-bounds play and, and run a quick set and get a quick shot. Um, and the girls did. They defended it really well. Um, just looked over our shoulder. I thought maybe a little bit too late looked over our shoulder so we didn't get a clean clean look at it. And, um, you know, we, we put our big up top so it was a, it was a hard pass to throw. And it, it worked. It's just we couldn't get – we didn't have enough time. Really, we didn't have enough time. We needed we need about two or three seconds more. Coach, what will you remember about these seniors? <laughs> Pretty good class, eh? Not bad. Um, you know, and there's no standout. That's what I love about them. They all play together. They all love each other on and off the court. Um, it, it, they couldn't have done it themselves. Not one girl could have done it themselves. But because they worked as a team, they made themselves one of the elite classes that have gone through. Camille, what do you think your four years staying here three times, winning a state title in 2015? It's an incredible opportunity. I mean, Obviously, like Coach said, my class couldn't get there on their own. We needed everybody. And to go out like this, of course, I wanted to win gold today, but 
to go out like this with my team, I wouldn't want <laughs> to be with any other class. It was amazing. It's been amazing. Danielle, you're one of several girls who will be back next season. What's it going to take for you guys to get back to this stage? Hard work and determination just to reach that final end goal. So you got to start from the very first first part scrimmage of the season. The girls talked about it. I wasn't there yet because I was still in volleyball, but they said their first scrimmage, they were already talking about it on the bus of getting back to the shot this year. Yes, sir. Two coaches' kids also. One big family. We needed to raise ticket prices so we could make sure our gate stayed okay. A lot of parents. A lot of double sets of parents, too, then, right? What do you make of having so many different sets of sisters on one team? It's really, it's really a lot of fun um, because you see practices. Um, you know, you got Lindsay and Danielle going at each other. You got Caitlin Mack and Cammie Mack going at each other day in and day out all the time. Um, Camille, not Camille, Cammie Ording and Elizabeth Ording, I mean, they're, they don't play the same position, but they're always talking to each other. They're always, you know, getting in each other's heads, helping each other out, or trying to fire them up. And it's just that closeness and that tight-knit family. You know, the girls that are friends all the way through high school that really get close. And it's not just the sisters. It's everybody hanging out together and having a lot of fun. I love playing with my sister. I mean, yes, I because I get to beat up around practice and nobody can yell at me for it, like at home. <laughs> but um, I, we always help each other out, tell each other what seals open, what post move to do, and we can just go back and forth with each other and bounce our energy off each other, and I love it.